Let's talk a little Auburn sports with our man, Justin Hokinson. Auburn Live on 3 Sports. Yeah, and Hoke just tweeted, uh, subscribe to the new On 3 Sports Roundtable YouTube channel. Um, we uh, uh, a Familiar uh, name. Yeah, historically, we've had to be careful over the last year how we use that word, Hoke, uh, but thank you. Roundtable YouTube channel, a lot of interesting and insightful interviews with various team sites will happen there, Hoke says, so you can do that. Uh, on YouTube where you subscribe to us. Give them all a thumbs up when you do it. Give them all a thumbs mm-hmm. up. Hope, what's happening, man? How are you? I'm good, guys. How you doing? Yeah. Doing awesome. Hey, if you ever leave on three sports and go to another company, you can be the next round of recruiting news. Of recruiting news. Work too. for us. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Write that down. No, it's, it's an idea Note. on the notepad. Um, well, I mean, let's start with TJ Finley. That's no, no offense to uh, anyone coming in, but this is a story that has been percolating for quite a while, and nobody is surprised uh, that TJ Finley has punched out as a graduate transfer. It was just, uh, it was never, it never worked. It just never worked for him at Auburn. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it didn't. I mean, I think that he was brought in initially, um, you know, just because they needed some competition, and he was there, and he's a guy that was you know, in the SEC, and he had a big body and a big frame, and you thought there's potential there. Um, and so and so you bring him in to compete. Um, and it, it never really, uh, it never really panned out, obviously. Um, you know, he didn't, he played a little bit back up against Bo. And then last year, you know, won those first two games, and then um, they got blown out and against Penn State, he got hurt, never got back in. Again. Actually, he got back in the game at Ole Miss for one possession, and he fumbled. And that was it. Uh, and then the last four games, he he didn't even travel with the team. He wasn't even a part of the team. So, um, yeah, no no real surprise. We heard a little bit about him possibly transferring after the season in the winter. I think that the coaching staff probably said, "Hey, you know, you're so close to graduating. Stick around, be a body in the sp- compete in the spring, whatever. Graduate." And so, barring just some unbelievable spring where he would have gone out and killed it and won the job which nobody expected um he he was gonna he was gonna graduate and he was gonna move on um so we'll see where he goes maybe back maybe back to louisiana back home he's engaged his fiance is from louisiana so it kind of makes sense maybe to go back and have one more year there but um yeah no surprise there with with tj finley leaving uh speculation has always been robbie ashford or grad transfer quarterback Nobody's talking about Holden Gurner, though. Uh, what are the chances that Gurner could end up being the guy? I mean, you no, know, he, he probably he should be talked about. Um, I mean, I think he, he came on the last two weeks of spring, played well. And, and I think that, you know, if they were to start a game tomorrow, I don't know which way they'd go. Um, I, I think there's more of a debate there than, than maybe people are, are willing to, to have. I do think of a transfer portal, I've always said, if a portal quarterback comes in, he's the now the odds on favorite to start. He's gotta be. And then can those other guys beat him out? If for some reason a portal quarterback isn't landed, which I continue to just think that would be a very surprising thing, um, then yeah, I think it's absolutely a battle. And Holden Gurner is absolutely in the discussion to start game one if a transfer quarterback isn't landed. If a transfer portal quarterback's landed, then you just have to assume based on going and getting him um, probably going to have more experience than the other two guys. You have to make him the odds on favorite, but Gurner's in the mix 100%. I mean, I think Ashford brings something unique. We all know his, his ability to run and that's exciting. And it takes you back to Nick Marshall days, or you think about Malik Willis at Liberty and, and I get it. Um, But Holden, I think came on those last two weeks. And if he has a really good summer, he'll, he'll compete in the fall. He'll be there competing in the fall. There's no question. Listen, I eventually I get to the ability to read coaches pretty good. I can tell when they're um, a lot of times I can tell when they're lying or covering something up, but really I can tell when they're nervous about something. I don't know Hugh Freeze enough yet. You see him a lot more than I do. Does he seem anxious about quarterback, desperate, panicked? Give me a feel on where Hugh Freeze is with his quarterback. Cause you see him a lot more than I do. Um, yeah, it, it, that's, it's funny. I, I, it's been interesting to watch him in the spring and he's just been so transparent that at times you're like, um, I mean, he'll come out and praise him, but he'll come out and criticize him. I think that, I, I really think that what he said has been pretty honest, which is they have some, they have some good moments. They had some good moments. There's some good attributes. They've had good attitudes for the most part to learn, but, but you know, there's deficiencies there. There's limitations, whether it's talent at the moment whether it's experience at the moment, just overall development of where those guys are. 
And um, there's no question that he thinks another quarterback coming in um, will, will be the better option. I mean, I think privately, he's probably been a lot more concerned about the position than publicly. Um, I think he's very well aware that if he wants to legitimately compete next year, have a chance to beat, you know, have, have a chance to even be, even be in the game against Bama, Georgia, LSU, those teams, and, and compete against those teams and try to pull off an upset, the quarterback's got to be a, a different guy, most, most likely. So I don't think he's desperate or anything. I mean, I do kind of respect how he's gone about looking for a portal quarterback. I don't think he's – he hasn't tried to bring in and offer every guy that hit the portal. Um, he's definitely gone after a few. He's hoped a few that, 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 that didn't enter would. They, they didn't enter the portal. You, know, you keep your eye on some guys. But I don't think he's been totally desperate in that regard to try to just get anybody in there. I've always said I think it needs to be the right guy, both talent-wise and culture-wise. So I would say he knows he needs a quarterback in there to compete, not just for this year, but if you could find a guy that's got two years, I, I think it sets you up really well for next year. If, if that guy's the guy, then you bring Walker White in next year. There's not pressure on him. If Gurner were to leave, there's not as much pressure on that because you've got a portal quarterback coming back. So I don't think there's desperation, but I think there's there's definitely a, hey, I need to get a guy in here if we want to maybe accomplish some things that, that we want to accomplish. I'm not sure we can get there with the guys we have. Justin Hokinson with us at underscore Jay Hokinson on Twitter, part of On3Sports, AuburnLive.com. He's on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Uh, educated guest, report, however you want to couch this. I don't care. I'm just asking the question. Has there been, in your opinion, or do you know, a portal quarterback visit Auburn, or do you think there is one scheduled to in the near future? Well, I think all eyes are on Casey Thompson and Peyton Thorne um, at the moment. Um, I think all eyes are on those two, on those two, on those two guys. And we'll see what we'll see what transpires from from those two. Peyton Thorne has got a couple of years of eligibility. Casey Thompson's got one. Thompson's probably more athletic. Peyton Thorne has got a, a, some pretty good upset upside. I think Scott had some interest from some schools, um, and you know, besides Auburn. So those are the two that were that we're watching at the moment. You know, Thompson visited last weekend, um, and he came away. We don't really know exactly how that visit went, but nothing's happened at the moment. So either Casey Thompson wants to go check out other schools and see what's out there, or he loved Auburn and Auburn said, well, let's just, you know, we were kind of checking a few guys out and maybe they want to take a harder look at Peyton Thorne before taking any, any commitments. But those are the two guys we're watching at the moment. Uh, Dunaway, when he brought you in, was talking about, you know, one of the portal additions was out of Appalachian State, and that's Jalen McLeod. He's an edge rusher. What do you know about McLeod? Yeah, I mean, he's 6'1", 235, 240. He, he, he's a little bit like Jeff Holland um, was in 2017. I think Jeff Holland was probably a little bit taller than 6'1", but kind of that <clears throat> undersized defensive end, edge, outside linebacker type player that can really rush the passer, um, which was just a massive need. Outside of quarterback, finding somebody at that position for Auburn was was maybe the second most important thing they could do in this portal because – Derek Hall's gone, Eric, uh, Eco Leota's gone, and you, you just really didn't have anybody there right now to get after the quarterback, truly get after the quarterback. This guy fits that bill. A little undersized, so he's not a true defensive end, but he's that, he's that outside linebacker edge guy that you can send off the edge, especially in passing situations, and, uh, and create havoc, hopefully. If you're Auburn and you're Ron Roberts and you're trying to create – create um, you know plays in the backfield and wreak havoc this guy fits that bill really well built um, hard working player and he just fits a need you've got to be able to pressure the quarterback at times and he can do that and, he, and again I, I go back to Jeff Holland in 2017 who was fantastic that season I'm not saying this guy's going to be that but he's that type of player that's just going to come off the edge and I think will really really help the defense try to accomplish what they want to accomplish um, this guy's going to end up being a big part of it. Playing in a very physical league coming out yeah. of the Sun Belt there. I, I wanted to ask you, um, in, in Nick Saban's uh, year, initial year at Alabama, Julio Jones was a big recruit, that first recruiting cycle, that sort of jump-started some things, Mark Ingram, that, that whole class. Is there one player that Auburn's already got or you think on the horizon that could be that Julio Jones-type player for Hugh Freeze's first class? 
Well, <clears throat> not, I mean, uh, if not, that's a uh, great story idea for you in the future uh, <laughs> as you work work over the next 122 days. <laughs> well, I think about Julio, and, and obviously the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that he was in-state. Um, not just that he was extremely talented, but he was an in-state player. And so for Nick Saban to come in and make that impact in the state of Alabama was huge. Because you think about Walker White, <clears throat> who's committed to Auburn, and um, but he's a kid that's from out of state. So while that's a huge commit, and Walker's recruiting, and, and he, he's the linchpin of this recruiting first recruiting class, and he could end up being that guy that you remember for years to come as that first Hugh Freeze recruit that helped launch, um, you know, whatever Hugh Freeze wants to do at Auburn. Um, he's not in state, so you'd probably have to look at in some some kind of in state player. I mean, Julio was such a uh, like a legend. I mean, he was just he was just the guy i don't know if there's a julio type player in the class but you think about somebody like cam coleman at, at phoenix city who is an extremely talented wide receiver pretty much coveted by everybody in the country and we you know auburn hasn't had a ton of success at both auburn high school and central phoenix city um over the years landing the elite players that have come out of there and so somebody like cam coleman could be that guy in state close to auburn massive recruiting battle um and at that receiver position that you look back and if you can land him maybe that's that guy that you that you that you could point to and say he kind of helped start it as far as making inroads in state and winning battles in state all right he is justin hokinson he'll have all of that covered for you at uh, auburn live part of on three sports at underscore j hokinson on twitter hope thank you for the time man have a great week all right see you guys all right buddy take care justin with us on the johnston rvcenter.com hotline.